Hi everybody, David here with VR Render. In this video, I want to take a look at something that was prompted by a question I got from one of my students, which is about lighting a room with just one window. More specifically, what's the best way to go about doing that? And in this beginner D5 video, I just want to go over my tips for how I would go about lighting a room such as this one in front of you with just one window and without using any supplementary lights. All right, let's go ahead and take a look. So we've got a pretty basic D5 scene here. It's got a very minimalist modern interior. We've got some nice objects and some nice decorative elements, but overall it's a pretty basic, very minimal room. And we have one major light source, which is this window right here. Now it doesn't really matter the placement of the window per se. I just put it here for ease of use. So let's just take a look at our scene. How do we go about lighting this scene using just natural light and without adding in any artificial light? All right, so the first thing we we'll wanna do is look at the geo and sky settings. And you can see that on the right here. Now, by default, the sunlight intensity is pretty low and the sun disc radius, I believe, is probably around like two or three or something. And so what we wanna do is, if you wanna light this using the geo and sky, let's go ahead and increase the sunlight intensity and then rotate the geo and sky so sunlight is coming through. All right, looks pretty good. You'll notice as well, we're getting some pretty harsh shadows. This will be partially determined by the sun disc radius. You can see we put it down to zero. It's pretty, pretty jagged. And if we crank it all the way up to 10, we get much softer, more diffuse light. Now, generally, you, my preference is this, you know, shoving the sun disc radius up quite a bit. But this is kind of just situation dependent. But it's nice to have that really, really nice smooth shadows. In saying that though, the scene is still kind of dark in areas. Now, let's pop over to the effects tab and there's a couple of things we wanna do here. By default, D5 currently in the 2.4, what are we in, 2.4 version, tends to have bloom on, not really sure why that's the default state. And so you get a kind of look like this. My preference is to turn that off. And we're gonna leave all the highlights and shadows and slopes. The other important thing is to make sure the auto exposure tab is off. Now, this isn't inherently bad. Like this kind of looks okay-ish, but you can see you're getting this massive hotspot, this blown out area that's right here. And it kind of just washes out the entire image. So the next thing you'll wanna do is turn off the auto exposure. And um, I suggest you do this for every D5 project full stop. Turn that fellow off, and now you can go in here and actually adjust the exposure. So the exposure is sort of like the amount of light coming into the lens of your fake camera. And so you wanna set this manually. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna leave those settings as they are for now. And if we wanna look at this from the point of view of using not just the Geo and Sky, but the HDRI, it is quite similar. I've gone ahead and put a basic sunrise on here, just a standard sunrise, nothing special. Again, you can crank the light and you can rotate the camera so light is coming through your one sort of uh, area, which in this case is the window. Now you don't have immediate control. You can't put the light everywhere that you want it to. Uh, you could try and rotate your model and do some things like that, but you know, really it's just light is coming in and it's hitting the wall that it's directly at. And so you can kind of tweak it with the rotate slider, but there are limitations to that. I've also gone ahead and turned on the additional sun. This by default will follow the HDRI. And you can see here, think of it as a light multiplier. So I can adjust the sunlight intensity and I can also adjust the radius. This radius value will mimic what you see over here on the geo and sky. The only difference is when you do the HDRI, you get most of your lighting from the actual HDRI itself. So for example, if I change it to something like this, and, um, or if we wanted to go like, you know, sunset, make it a little bit more visible. Let's drop the auto exposure. There you go. You can see that a little bit better. Okay, so that's not too bad. Go to the HDRI put it on sunrise, and again, make sure you've got light and the sunlight intensity and the sun disk radius. Okay, it's still by and large though, 
pretty dark and you're still kind of going in here and adjusting the exposure value. What we need is an alternative light source that will add light to the scene without really blowing out what you've got in the window. And to do that, it's pretty simple. I am going to go here and add a rectangle light and I'm gonna pop outside here. So there you can see our, our SketchUp building. And I'm gonna place this rectangle light right here. Now, it's a little bit hard to see in its default state. So I'm gonna change the color property to bright red. All right, it's actually pointing downwards, so we're not seeing anything right now. Grab the rotate and we'll just spin that. All right, I'm gonna lift this up and then I'm going to move it to our window. And you wanna make sure now that this is lined up nicely. So, you know, you can do it this way. You can kind of wing it a little bit. You can also go up to the display options and turn on wireframe, or you can also turn on the clay mode. All right, and you might find the clay to be a little bit easier to see. So there is our light. Let's push it inside and there we go. You can see it's all red on white. That is because of the clay. It's just an easy way to visualize your lights. Let's go ahead and put that back to the real-time preview. Okay, looks pretty good. Now, if all goes well, we're able to put this outside of our actual build and you can see it's outside the window now. Probably needs to be lined up a little bit better, but it is emitting light. And you can see now to test this, let's go to our environment. Go to Geo and Sky and put it to nighttime. You should see nothing outside, but you should have this nice light. And again, I put it to red, so you can really visualize what the light is actually doing. I'm gonna move myself out of the way here. Just make sure we've got all the options visible. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna go back now to the lighting setup that I'd prefer to use on this, which is going to be the HDRI, this nice sunrise. All right, you can still see the red. I've got the light coming in here through the window. You can see it on the wall as I spin the camera. So that looks nice. I do have the sun set to 20, sun disk radius. And now what I can do is select my light, this single rectangular light. So let's go to our inspector. And I'm gonna change the temperature. We know it's working. I'm gonna change the temperature or you can just change the color back to default white. And now let's take a look. I'm gonna increase the intensity a little bit. And I'm also going to make sure to turn off visible in reflections. And you can see that on this sphere right there, on, off, on, and off. You want to make sure that that is off. Okay. One last thing we can do now is adjust the attenuation radius, which will determine really how far that light actually shoots out. I'm going to make it go pretty much all the way. I don't see any problem with cranking it all the way. And now let's just drop the intensity. So we can start by putting it to zero, which will bring us back to just the HDR lighting. And we can slowly increase this. You can also reposition our light if needs be. You do generally want this though outside of the actual window. But if you're having a hard time getting light exactly where you need it to go, one thing you can do is adjust the size. Generally, it's recommended that you try and get this to line up pretty snugly with the window outside and make sure that it's kind of flush. There we go, that looks pretty nice. All right, go back into our room. It's very blown out right now, but that is partially just due to the intensity slider. And so we're gonna start bringing that back. All right, I think that's looking pretty nice. All in all, yeah. And you can see now we've got light in the room it looks bright, it looks kind of welcoming, kind of warm at the same time. And we're getting some really, really nice shadows. If we completely turn off this light, you can kind of see the difference here. Getting really dark pronounced shadows. And again, the only other way to fix that would be to go back to the exposure tab and kind of blow out the image a little bit. So I think it's a pretty simple way. Just add a rectangular plane. And if you're really still stuck for a little bit more lighting, you can always add a rectangle plane on the ceiling. Again, I'm gonna put this, uh, let's put it to about 5,000 by 5,000 and drop the intensity very, very low. You wanted to see this again. There we go. That's the effect it's actually happening. So let's put this down to like two or three. 
Now, in many ways, you're still kind of adding artificial lights, but they're not lights that are visible in the scene. It's not like having spotlights from the ceiling or hanging lights on the wall or anything like that. You're just sort of adding this sort of bland white light to the scene just to lighten up the shadows. And you can see this guy will sit right here quite happily on the ceiling and just adding a little bit more light into the shot. Keep it at a very low value and you can always reposition it or move it as you see fit, but it will do a really, really nice job. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it there. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video soon.